Correct me if I'm wrong here. Normally, I have an incredible memory. I rarely forget anything, but this particular recollection, it's from four years ago, so maybe my memory is a bit clouded. Correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't it just four years ago that the mainstream media was fighting the good fight, preaching the good word about defunding the police? Wasn't it four years ago? The mainstream media was claiming that America was systemically racist and the only way to solve this problem was to reimagine and rebuild the system. What was that campaign slogan again from our fearless leader, Johnny B. Biden? Build back better! Build back better! Hmm. Since Johnny B. has trouble completing sentences, he referred to it as Triple B or B cubed. Four years ago, the Cemetery News Network, known to most people as CNN, and known to people in the mainstream media as the place where media careers go to perish. Four years ago, CNN was one of the leaders in the fight against systemic racism and defunding the police. So, I am incredibly confused as to why CNN has not come to the defense of Donald Trump. Which ain't bad! Not only has CNN not come to his defense, they are also complaining about the Trumper supposedly wanting to tear down and rebuild the system. The same system CNN was trying to demolish four years ago. Watch for yourself. Now, Trump and his disciples, they all have the same complaint, basically, that the system is somehow stacked against them and that they all have the same cure for that, tearing down the system altogether. Before we go any further, if you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at KC underscore BTL84. Now, after seeing that clip, I'm sure some of you guys are wondering, KC, who in the hell was that? I don't expect you to recognize her since ratings at CNN are in the pooper. Hell, it's easier to identify anonymous dump divers in the WNBA than it is to identify the unknowns collecting woke welfare at CNN. Except, of course, Wolf Blitzer. Woof, woof, woof. Everyone is familiar with and loves America's favorite dinosaur. But the lovely woman in that clip, her name is Abby Phillip, not Abby Phillips. I guess they ran out of room on the birth certificate and couldn't add the S to the end of her last name. Abby Phillip. She is a proud graduate of Woke U Harvard. She was initially studying pre-med, but she ended up graduating with a Bachelor's of Indoctrination in Government. Now, I'm pointing this out because I could not find where Abby Phillip had any experience in the field of law, which is probably why she made this outlandish, ridiculous, uninformed comparison when talking about the trial of the Trumper. (laughs) Thursday night, Dr. Phil was the guest on something called Newsnight. I guess Abby Phillip doesn't have enough mainstream name recognition to have her name included in the title of her own show. Over at Fox News, the titles of shows in prime time, they include the name of the host. The Ingram Angle, Hannity, Gutfeld. Same thing at MSNBC. The Wicked Weave Out with the Bundle of Joy, Joy Reid, Matt Al. I can't remember the name of the show that's hosted by Larry O'Connell, but... I'm sure it has his name listed in the title. That's not how it works at CNN. The people working at this dump, they are so unknown, they can't include their names in the title. So they come up with these generic names like Newsnight or CNN This Morning. (laughs) For reasons unknown, Dr. Phil agreed to appear on CNN Thursday night to discuss the trial of the Trumper. Now, I know why CNN wanted Dr. Phil to appear. He just released a high-profile interview with future President Trump. When I watched the interview yesterday afternoon, it had almost a million views in less than 24 hours. Now, I'm assuming Dr. Phil is making the media rounds to promote the interview. I don't know why he would waste his time appearing on CNN since no one watches this network. Like most people with a functioning frontal cortex, Dr. Phil doesn't think Donald Trump received due process during his trial in New York City. Now, Dr. Phil, he thought this before the information was leaked yesterday afternoon that a juror leaked the verdict to a family member, which I would assume that is probably going to result in a mistrial. 
I don't know. I don't know. But Dr. Phil, he was trying to explain to Abby Phillip that he believed Donald Trump didn't receive a fair trial. Trump was muzzled throughout the trial. He wasn't allowed to speak publicly. Dr. Phil was making the case that the jury only received half the story. He also claimed that the judge allowed prejudicial information into the trial. He mentioned a plea agreement the prosecution made with Michael Cohen. Now, at that point, Abby Phillip utilized a common tactic at CNN, interrupting a guest when they are making a valid point, so dozens of viewers that are watching aren't at risk of being exposed to potential truth. During the scheduled interruption, Abby Phillip made an odd comparison. Watch for yourself. It is not uncommon at all for people who are accomplices to crimes, people who have taken plea deals, non prosecute That is not uncommon at all for, ha for those people to then testify in subsequent trials for their alleged co-conspirators. That's kind of how a lot of these prosecutions work. Well, really, give me examples of where that has been considered appropriate. I mean, it, look, prosecutors are prosecuting organized crime all the time. And in a lot of those cases, they are relying on co-conspirators to uh, put people who are at the higher levels of the organization behind bars. I just, I don't understand how you can say that because someone signed a, a not, or, you know, was not prosecuted, signed a non-prosecution agreement, they, that information or their testimony cannot be uh, presented before the jury if they were a part of the alleged scheme. Well, you'll have to give me an example to respond to because I, I just simply don't agree with that. I think it's not uh, typical for juries to do this. I've spent most of my career. It happens uh, in, in mob cases all the time. I. I don't understand. Now, in all fairness to Abby Phillips, she's not necessarily wrong here. It is extremely common when the FBI or the DEA is investigating organized crime or drug cases to flip people within the organization. Matter of fact, I would be willing to bet that's how most drug cases are solved. The investigation starts at the bottom with the street dealers. They get him to turn on his supplier. His supplier provides information on his supplier and on and on it goes. The penalties are so severe on crimes involving drugs that informants have become common. That's why the mafia banned lower level soldiers from getting involved in drug crimes. They knew the penalties were so severe and people who got caught were more likely to flip. However, we're not talking about organized crime here. Donald Trump wasn't running some drug syndicate. He wasn't the head of the Gambino family in New York City. Donald Trump was accused of falsifying business records and giving money to Stormy Daniels to shut the hell up. It is a huge, huge difference. So someone please make that comparison make sense. Maybe that's why Dr. Phil kept asking Abby Phillip for examples. Maybe he was confused by the comparison too. Are you really comparing hush money to the mafia? Are you really comparing hush money to Pablo Escobar? Of course, Abby Phillip couldn't provide examples because I don't think she knows what the hell she's talking about. I can think of plenty of examples off the top of my head of former mafia members becoming government informants. Henry Hill damn near took down the entire Lucchese family. Sammy Gravano took down John Gotti. Hell, John Gotti had beaten the government three times and probably would have beaten them a fourth time if he wasn't caught on a wiretap talking shit about Sammy the Bull. Frank Lucas turned on the mafia in the late 70s and exposed the rampant corruption in the NYPD. Now, how do any of these crime figures compare to Donald Trump? Look, Abby Phillip is just doing her job. It is no secret at this point that the mainstream media is the primary tool being used by deacons at Woke United Methodist. Abby Phillip is paid to push an agenda. Right now, the main agenda in the mainstream media is doing everything in their power to ensure Donald Trump doesn't get elected. Earlier in the show, Abby Phillip was complaining about Donald Trump possibly seeking revenge. Now, during his interview with Dr. Phil, I seem to remember Trump saying that he was not going to seek revenge against John Biden, but maybe I missed something. If he does get elected, though, and he does seek revenge, would 
anyone blame him? Seriously, just think about everything he has been put through since he announced that he was running for president in 2015. After years of pretending to be friendly, the mainstream media turned against him. This was back when the media still had influence. They tarnished his reputation. Sales of oranges declined double digits. Would have been the biggest decline in the country, but CNN's ratings managed to beat them for that honor. During his presidency, he was constantly fighting impeachment. Remember the illusion of Russian collusion? <laughs> he was blamed for January 6th. His home was invaded looking for classified documents. Oddly enough, John Biden, I seem to remember, went through something similar and that story quickly vanished. He was indicted in Georgia where his mugshot was immediately released to the public in an attempt to humiliate him. I don't know what the hell's going on right now with the case in Georgia. I think it's being delayed, maybe? I can't remember why. Maybe Fannie Willis applied for a name change and they're still processing the paperwork. He was put on trial in New York City in a district that is 87% woke. Hmm. I wonder why. I wonder why that district was selected. If I remember correctly, the judge in the case was appointed the district attorney in New York City, Al Bragg, he was basically made it his personal mission to get Trump convicted. Convicted of a crime that most people would probably assume is somewhat common in politics. I mean, I wonder if a politician has ever paid someone off in order to keep them quiet. I wonder. I wonder if that's ever happened before in the past. For the past nine years, the media, they have been absolutely relentless in their attempt to take down the Trumper. Would anyone blame him if he was thinking about revenge? I think one of the reasons the mainstream media is so bitter, none of their attempts are working. If anything, they're actually helping him. 24 hours after he was convicted, Donald Trump raised over $52 million. During the entire month of April, John Biden raised $51 million. Maybe his loss in 2020 was a blessing in disguise because I think a lot of people have woke up, for lack of a better word, I think a lot of people have woke up in the last three and a half years. And I'm not just talking politically. I'm not talking about Johnny B. Biden and Cam Harris. I think a lot of people have woke up when it comes to the mainstream media. Every day, the mainstream media loses influence. CNN's not even a major player anymore. Hell, CNN no longer competes with Fox and MSNBC. They are now competing with News Nation, home of Chris Cuomo. Hey, it's me, Chrissy C. Even networks like Fox News aren't as trusted as they were four years ago. It just... I don't know. To me, it just feels like the media has lost almost all of its influence. What do you think? Has the mainstream media lost its influence, at least over the general public? Also, give me your thoughts on Dr. Phil and Abby Phillip. Abby Phillip compares the Trump trial to trials involving mobsters and drug cartels. I mean, I get what she was trying to do, but the comparison just seemed off to me. Do you agree? Let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. Appreciate your support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.